Hello, and welcome to Tuesday's episode of the Literary Lutheran Reads the Book of Concord. Today we'll be going through the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. We will be reading from section 35 to 52. The first petition. We pray using the name given us in our baptism, by which God makes us a part of himself. God's name is holy among us when we believe, teach, and live according to his word. In the worst possible way, God's name is profaned among us when men preach and teach contrary to God's word and when people live an openly evil life. Luther's highest concern is that God's name be kept holy through genuine biblical teaching in contrast to all the false teaching in the world. Luther's hymn, Lord, Keep Us Steadfast in Your Word, is a powerful application of these truths. Hallowed be thy name. This is indeed somewhat difficult and not expressed in good German, for in our mother tongue we would say, Heavenly Father, help us in every way so that your name may be holy. But what does it mean to pray that his name may be holy? Is it not holy already? Yes, it is always holy in its nature. But in our use, it is not holy. For God's name was given to us when we became Christians and were baptized. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. So we are called God's children and have the sacraments, by which he connects us with himself so that everything that belongs to God must serve for our use. Romans chapter 8, verses 16 to 17. Now here is a great need that we ought to be most concerned about. This name should have its proper honor. It should be valued holy and grand as the greatest treasure and holy thing. Hailegitu, a relic that we have. As godly children, we should pray that God's name, which is already holy in heaven, may also be and remain holy with us upon earth and in all the world. But how does it become holy among us? Answer, as plainly as it can be said, when both our doctrine and life are godly and Christian. Since we call God our Father in this prayer, it is our duty always to act and behave ourselves as godly children, that he may not receive shame but honor and praise from us. Now God's name is profaned by us either through our words or in our works, for whatever we do upon the earth must either words or works, speech or act. In the first place, then, God's name is profane when people preach, teach, and say in God's name what is false and misleading. They use his name like an ornament and attract a market for falsehood. That is, indeed, the greatest way to profane and dishonor the divine name. Furthermore, men, by swearing, cursing, conjuring, and other such actions, grossly abuse the holy name as a cloak for their shame. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. In the second place, God's name is profaned by an openly wicked life and works. When those who are called Christians and God's people are adulterers, drunkards, misers, and years of slanderers. 1 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verse 11. Here again, God's name must come to shame and be profaned because of us. It is a shame and disgrace for a flesh and blood father to have a bad, perverse child that opposes him in words and deeds. Because of that child, the father suffers contempt and reproach. In the same way also, it brings dishonor upon God if we are called by his name and have all kinds of goods for, from him, yet we teach, speak, and live in any other way than as godly and heavenly children. People would say about us that we must not be God's children, but the devil's children. 1 John chapter 2, verse 29. So you see that in this petition, we pray for exactly what God demands in the second commandment. We pray that his name not be taken in vain to swear, curse, lie, deceive, and so on, but be used well for God's praise and honor. For whoever uses God's name for any sort of wrong profanes and desecrates his holy name. This is how it used to be when a church was considered desecrated, when a murder or any other crime had been committed in it. Or a, mon or a monstrance or relic was desecrated as though they were holy in themselves, when they became unholy by misuse. So this point is easy and clear if only the language is understood. To hollow means the same as to praise, magnify, and honor both in word and deed. Here now learn what great need there is for such prayer, because we see how full the world is of sects and false teachers 
who all wear the holy name as a cover and sham for their doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. We should by all means pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. And cry out and call upon God against all people who preach and believe falsely. We should pray against whatever opposes and persecutes our gospel and pure doctrine and would suppress it, as do the bishops, tyrants, enthusiasts, and such. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Likewise, we should pray for ourselves who have God's word but are not thankful for it, nor live like we ought according to the word. If you pray for this with your heart, you can be sure that it pleases God. For he will not hear anything more dear to him than that his honor and praise is exalted above everything else, and that his word is taught in its purity and is considered precious and dear. The Second Petition In this petition we are praying to God that the kingdom of Christ will come and remain among us, both in this life and finally on the last day. We ask God that we will remain faithful and daily grow in his grace, so that many more will come to Christ's kingdom. This petition shows that God wants us to ask not only for small cares and needs of life, but also for great things from Him. If God invites us to pray for such great and wonderful things as His kingdom of grace, surely He will provide also for our daily needs. Thy kingdom come. In the first petition, we prayed about God's honor and name. We prayed that He would prevent the world from adorning its lies and wickedness with God's name but that he would cause his name to be valued as great and holy both in doctrine and life, so that he may be praised and magnified in us. Here we pray that his kingdom also may come, but just as God's name is holy in itself, and we still pray that it be holy among us, so also his kingdom comes of itself without our prayer. Yet we still pray that it may come to us, that is, triumph among us and with us, so that we may be a part of those people among whom his name is hallowed and his kingdom prospers. But what is God's kingdom? Answer, nothing other than what we learned in the creed. God sent his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, into the world to redeem and deliver us from the devil's power. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He sent him to bring us to himself and to govern us as a king of righteousness, life and salvation against sin, death, and an evil conscience. For this reason, he has also given his Holy Spirit, who is to bring these things home to us by his Holy Word, and to illumine and strengthen us in the faith by his power. We pray here in the first place that this may happen with us. We pray that his name may be so praised through God's Holy Word and a Christian life, that we who have accepted it may abide and daily grow in it, and that it may gain approval and acceptance among other people. We pray that it may go forth with power throughout the world, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. We pray that many may find entrance into the kingdom of grace, John chapter 3, verse 5. Be made partakers of, re of redemption, Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 14, and be led, by, be led to it by the Holy Spirit, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, so that we may all together remain forever in the one kingdom now begun. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads a Book of Concord. Have a blessed day.